All right, here's another example where um, we are going to confront some of those previous sticking points and add a new one. So as we read the question, this is really the place where we want to be drawing the picture. We throw a ball downward at an initial speed of 5 meters per second from the roof edge of a 40 meter tall building. All right, that first sentence, even before we decide that we're overwhelmed with the problem, we start our drawing. We know that we're at the top of a roof. We know that we are throwing a ball downwards. We know that there's gravity. And we can even start to make our list of given information. There's a lot of numbers here. So first of all, we're throwing downwards. So let's make sure we really remember that, downwards. That arrow tells us that we must have a negative initial velocity, negative 5 meters per second. We are starting at the top of a building, so we are 40 meters above the ground. And we know that gravity is acting on us negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All of that, and the gravity part is this whole section of the chapter, all of that came from the first sentence. Even before we've decided that there's a problem to solve, we are trying to approach this situation just by thinking about, okay, what information can we get out of that situation? All right, the second question is when we have to move on to figuring out what we're looking for. We need to find what variable when what is true in the problem. We are trying to find the speed of the ball. So although speed and velocity are not the same, our equations will give us velocity, and speed just means we'll ignore the sign. When it is 25 meters below the roof edge. So if we're here, we are asking for when this difference is 25 meters. But that means that what y value is that compared to the ground of zero. We are asking for V when Y equals not 25, but 15 meters. Or you can think of this as when the change in Y, the displacement, is downwards, negative, 25 meters. That will get you to the same final answer. Okay, so we're finding V when Y is something, that tells us the VY equation. Every single time, the reason that we build up that skill is so that we always know what tool to get out of our toolbox. All right, so step four is just writing down the equation without plugging stuff in. So we'll do that. And now we get to the math. So step five is the math part. V is the thing we're looking for, so it stays a letter. The initial velocity is negative 5, that gets squared, plus 2 times negative 9.8 times the final location, 15, minus the initial location, 40. You'll notice that 15 minus 40 is negative 25, and that's what we mean by the change in y. All right, so let's simplify this a little bit. v squared is equal to 25, the negative sign is in the parentheses, so it is also squared. And now we have 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 25. So that becomes a positive 490. So v squared is equal to 515. So we take the square root of that. And v is equal to plus or minus 22.7 meters per second because we took the square root, but then the speed, we don't have to have the plus or minus, the speed would be 22.7 meters per second. All right, so our step six check of does this make sense? If we threw it downwards, then we know that what is going to be true as it falls? Is it going to speed up or is it going to slow down? It's 
going to speed up. And so the, our sense check is mostly making sure our number is bigger than five like we expected it to be. That sense check is saying, hey, you didn't just have a negative under the square root and pretend it wasn't there, right? That would be a big problem for us if that were the case. And that sense check is saying, okay, 22.7 meters per second. We've been seeing those in terms of throwing balls around those at those speeds. That seems reasonable enough. It's not going thousands of meters per second like a rocket. It's not going just a couple of meters per second. We've already ruled that out because it has to speed up. That's all we mean by the sense check. So in this case, yes, the answer makes sense. And so we've finished the problem. The sticking points here was making sure, especially the picture helps us, making sure we recognize that 25 meters below the roof means that y is not just 25. That is something that we will be able to figure out for ourselves by doing more of these problems and practicing it, but also by making sure that we don't rush through too quickly and just see the number 25 and hope that it's the right number. A lot of mistakes in the setup come from going too fast and you really want to give yourself time to complete these properly. Alright, so we will see you in the next video. There's one left for chapter two.